In this video, I'm gonna turn the camera on and take you through a full day in the life of an eBay reseller. If we have a look at the numbers of what took place over the weekend in sales, it was $1,787 worth of revenue, an increase in 71% on the prior period. We had a total of an average sale price, $45 per item, and uh, we sold 39 items, which is just crazy. I normally do about 25, so it was definitely a little bit more than normal. Uh, I have shipped five of those items out last Friday morning, so we've got 34 items to do today in this video, plus a whole whole heap of other stuff left uh, in the day as well. So plan to get done. First thing that I like to do is the post. eBay has said to do your post first and focus on that. Uh, so that's how I like to start pretty much most of my days. Uh, so let's get into the first category. So I don't really have any explanation for why these uh, clothing items have sold because I haven't listed a piece of clothing in a very long time. And I'm actually trying to condense out of the category. I did take a few best offers though. So maybe that had a bit of an influence as to why we've sold a few, but in total $232 worth of revenue in the clothing category has come through this weekend. An average sale price of $29. This first one here, um, this was a Levi's button-up shirt, and I've had it for quite some time, a slightly longer sell-through rate on this one here, um, but we got a $28.95 sale price on that one there. I would have bought it in a thrift store for about six or seven bucks, um, selling it for $21 before postage is pretty cool. Um, this was a really good sale, actually. This was a British Lions Rugby Union jersey, uh, the uh, British Lions over there in the UK. Uh, that one sold for $55. So I think I paid about 10 bucks for that one. Maybe it I actually can't remember where I bought that for, uh, but wouldn't have paid more than 10. Uh, this one here, we've got a Ralph Lauren size small work shirt. Can't, uh, I, don't, I, I don't think I'd be buying this if I was out in the thrifts um, <laughs> at the present day, but uh, I've had this in the cupboard for quite some time. The Ralph Lauren, uh, we got a $25 sale price for that one there. This was a good one that I picked up in the States and another Ralph Lauren, but this was the polo shirt. And you want to look for the big fat pony. If you can find a big fat, fat, fat pony, you'll do well. $30 uh, for that one there. So that was a pretty good sale. Uh, now the NFL season's kicked off uh, over in the States. So no wonder a few of my USA purchases that I made when I was over there thrifting uh, have now gone on to sell. So this one here, the Philly Eagles, this one sold for 20 bucks. So that was pretty decent. Uh, and then this one here, the Baltimore Ravens. Um, who's a Ravens fan out there? Uh, we got a $25 sale price on the Ravens top there as well. So that was cool. Couple of NFL clothing items. No wonder they're selling at the moment. Uh, this here as well was a Nike SB jumper. We got a $28.50 sale price on that one there. It was a size small, which I don't typically do anymore, but um, $28.95, but I think it was the best offer. Maybe a coupon. Make sure you're doing your cu uh, coupons because I'm seeing a lot of discounted items without my influence. Uh, just simply getting taken up at the checkout and it's causing a lot more sales to come through. Uh, the last one that I've got for you, pretty short and sharp. We've got a rod and gun uh, men's polo shirt there and that one sold for $20. So between $9 ASP, $232 in clothing. I don't have a lot of the category left and I am trying to clear it out. If anyone would like to do wholesale for clothing, kind of stuff like this, um, let me know in the comments below. Shoot me a note on Instagram and I'll see if I can do basically some op shop pricing for you and send it out in maybe allotments of say 20 items of clothing. Let me know. All right, guys, we're going to have a look at these shoes that have gone on to sell. We've had a total of four that have come through this weekend, $350 in revenue with an $87.50 average sale price. So you slog it out with clothing and yet you can go on to sell four pairs of shoes and make an extra $120 compared to the revenue that we got in the clothing category. So I think shoes is a really good category to focus on, guys, for, for time for money. Um, these Puma Fuse, uh, a really good pair of shoes. Uh, look, I need to put some laces into them. But uh, yeah, really good soles. They're almost in like new condition, to be honest with you. Uh, we got a $40 sale price on those ones there. These are the Adidas Sabalos. We got a $40 sale price for these ones as well. As you can see, there's a whole lot of wear left in these ones. Um, so good to get those out the door. Now, guys, these ones here, the Adidas Ultra Boost. Have a look at these. What about the condition on those? They've got plenty of wear left in them. No wonder we were able to get ourselves a $90 sale price for those ones there. The Adidas Ultra Boosts. If you can find them, I'd be happy to pay upwards of $30 to $35 uh, in the thrift for something like that. Now, these ones here, my uh, Ultra Running Shoes. What a brand this has turned into. Bought these off Facebook Marketplace, about 40 pairs. Uh, spent about 15 bucks a pair. It was quite a big spend, uh, but they're all in brand new condition. And these are actually the best shoes that I had in the bunch. Uh, this is the Provision 3.0 Adidas, uh, sorry, Ultra uh, Running Shoe. And I ended up getting $150 sale price. Plus, we got $30 worth of international postage on those ones there. So $180 worth of revenue in a pair of brand new ultra running shoes. So there you go, guys. 350 bucks. I put them into a satchel, no bubble wrap. I literally just whack them in like this. Uh, we go like that, and then we put them into a satchel. Boom, and you're done. So that'll be a very easy post out. 350 bucks, really good stuff. 
Our next category that we're gonna have a look at is the video games and also the video game consoles. We had two really good sales come through that I actually only just bought the other day on uh, up on the sunny coast for a private pick. We've got the Game Boy Advanced SP. I bought this one for $5. There was a bit of an issue with the screen, as you can see there. There was a little bit of screen damage, so it may need a replacement, but uh, I ended up putting it up for $115 and it sold within the space of just three hours. Super quick sell through rate. Um, everyone's after those ones, clearly. And then this one here as well, we've got a Game Boy Color that was faulty. Uh, it didn't turn on, the batteries were put in, it, it just isn't working. I just marked it up as a faulty product for $65, but they are so sought after these things that I knew I'd get a quick turnaround, and I did. So $180 in the space of just a few hours of lift, listing these up yesterday uh, has been an awesome quick return there for me. Um, now, these ones here as well, a bunch of video games, there they all are there that we're able to sell, and we had a total sale price of $105.50 for all of them. Hopefully you can see the titles there. Uh, there was really no outliers. They were all around the average price of about $17.50, $105 worth of value. Um, probably the best of the bunch. It's a, it's a classic. I don't really need to spend too much time on it. Uh, Wii Sports Resort there, we got a $25 sale price uh, on that one there. Dragon Ball Z as well, that's probably the only other one, $22 and 50 cents for that one there. But the rest, we're all talking sort of 10 to 20 bucks. But um, video games, always a consistent seller. I'm always putting them when they sell in single item only uh, into these. We've got the medium Australia Post tracked envelopes. They just fall into there. You can put some bubble wrap if you want into the case uh, just to protect it from getting crushed. Uh, but I'll always just slide it into the envelope just like that and I'll ship it out with tracking number provided. Uh, it cost me $4.50 when I buy in bulk from Australia Post. So go and do that if you're selling DVDs uh, or um, video games, it'll do yourself some wonders uh, and you'll never have an issue when you do track postage. But this is where the numbers really get interesting. We've got the DVD category next. And as you guys know, as you can see behind me, video games and DVDs is one of the biggest categories that I sell. I'm about to show you the 12 sales that we've had in the DVD category. It's a total of $588.50, an average sale price of $49. A lot of these DVDs are going off internationally. And as you'll see in a second, it's a lot of brand new and box sets. So a really good sort of uh, indicator of what sells well in the DVD space. So let's dive into these and I'll show you what's moving. All right, guys, so here it is. Uh, we've got, as you can see, the 12 items right here, a lot of them big box sets. The first one here is Shaun the Sheep. As you can see, brand new and sealed. This one here is actually off overseas. It sold for $55 plus $30 worth of international postage on that one there. So $85 uh, worth of revenue, which was awesome. This was a great one. I went $25 worth of international postage for Nat Geo. Uh, it sold brand new for 64 bucks. Plus we got that $25 sale price uh, at postage price as well. This was a really good one going internationally. Uh, Lex, the complete series. I bought this for $8 in an op shop and it's ended up selling for $70 every single episode of this TV series, plus $20 worth of international postage. So a $90 sale price, three international sales right there. Hi Shaparel, I bought this complete series in Melbourne uh, just a couple of weeks ago. I bought it for $10, it was hiding behind the counter. You may have remembered that video. I got a $109 sale price on that one there. So that was fantastic. Um, this one as well, a bit like Shaun the Sheep, we've got Hulk here as well. Bought these out of Big W for a very, very cheap price. I think I paid 20 bucks for Shaun the Sheep. I think I paid about $10. Uh, for the Incredible Hulk. This one here, the Hulk, uh, has gone on to sell for 65 bucks. So just fantastic, uh, selling domestically. Two really good brand new box sets there. No wonder they have sold quick. Uh, we've got this one here. We've got the Australian Fishing Championships. I saw this one box set in an op shop a couple of months ago. We've got a $38 turnaround on that one there. Bit of a unique one to ship off, but uh, I'll put some bubble wrap around it with some butcher's paper and that should be fine. Um, now we've got some individual DVDs right here. As you can see, these four here are all out of this big W buy uh, that I bought a few weeks back and we're having some absolutely fantastic turnaround. I bought all of these for $4 a piece. These two have sold for $22.50 a piece. Uh, so $45 worth of value in Blue Bloods. And then this one here, Modern Family, went for $13. And then we just sold Clarence a second ago. That one sold for $20 as well. So a um, couple of other ones that are pre-owned. Uh, Tropic Thunder went for $9.50, uh, $9 sorry. And then this one here, no offense, if you can find this TV show, Fremantle Media, it's a good one to be finding. Uh, we got a $25 sale price on those there. So I'm actually using the large satchels, sorry, the large uh, envelopes from Australia Post now for two DVD sales. Um, so that'll go into those. And uh, yeah, 12 sales, $588 worth of value and uh, a $49 average sale price. 
So that's really what I mean. 588 bucks, and you're looking at clothing that was what, $232 for eight sales. And then you've got something like this, which is a whole lot easier to list up. It's a whole lot easier to ship off. And the sell-through rate for the item as well is a whole lot quicker than it is for all of the clothing items. I'm, us I'm using clothing as an example because it was such a heavy focus for me uh, back when I first started reselling. And I've looked at the numbers, which is why I wanted to put the numbers into this video the way that I have, because it shows average sale price. And it also, I can then tell you the indication of sell-through rate based on my experience with the categories. So my whole business has really focused now on media not because of any other reason that it is easy to list up and ship off, as I mentioned, but it's also just a better average sale price and a quicker sell-through rate, which is ultimately the goal of what we're trying to do here on eBay. So for me, it's not about selling clothing. It's not even about selling shoes as much anymore. I'm just going to go to where the money and the attention is. And for me, it's definitely been media. Hopefully with all these numbers today, you can see that too. Now, if you were counting all those items up, that's only 32 out of the 34 items that have gone on to sell this weekend. The other two are at mum and dad's place. And you know what that means. Yeah. Say hello. Say hello. Say hello, guys. Hi, guys. You're gorgeous. You're such a cutie. Mm -hmm. All right, so this was the other thing that sold which I won't get out, but I'll put a little screen grab up here for you. It was $115, it was a Nintendo Wii console. Um, so I had a bunch of games, controllers, you can see a little bit of it in there, but 115 bucks, I'm probably only gonna make about 25 bucks on this because I think I bought it for about 50 or $60 as a bundle. So when you take out fees and postage, it's gonna cost a little bit to ship off, it is quite big, but the carry case will make it easy to just slip into a box. But yeah, about 20 bucks on that one. The other one was actually a Ninja Turtle action figure. And I just remembered then having a look around here in the spare room, that it isn't at mum and dad's, it's actually back home on my desk. I use it as a little display toy. So that's gonna have to come off and be shipped out. But that one, I think sold for like, I'll put the screen grab there, like 20, $25, I think. <laughs> So pretty quick and easy process today, guys. There was a lot of satchels and a lot of envelopes, as you can see there. It made it uh, to be just a couple of hours to get that one knocked out, which is always a good feeling knocking over the Monday post. Um, it's 11 o'clock though. We're gonna down, we are down at the beach now, and I'm gonna go for a run, which is something that I've really changed up over the last few weeks, coming down into what is one of the greatest spots in the world, in my opinion, uh, Hedges Avenue, Mermaid Beach here on the Gold Coast. Uh, and I blast out four to six Ks over lunch. And it's always the hottest part of the day. It gets a sweat up, it gets me feeling good. And, uh, and then I try to jump into the gym at five o'clock as well. So um, I, I guess I was grinding away for two years on this YouTube channel, posting three videos a week. And now that I've started to bring in more of that personal health and fitness side of things, social stuff, friends and family, um, the, the YouTube channel videos have dropped away. You know, there's one or two videos a week going up on the channel each week now. And I did get a number of messages come through from a few of you guys saying, hey, Matt, where are you? Are you okay? You haven't posted a video. And I'm actually a lot better than I was when I was posting videos, three videos a week. So uh, I just sort of give you that little bit of an update. Um, these are changes that I've made to try and make myself sustainable uh, for the long term. And it's already starting to have a really positive effect on my eBay business, as you can see with 34 sales coming through, a whole lot more than normal. So um, I'm gonna punch out this run, get myself feeling good, get a bit of a sweat up. And, uh, and then we've got a few more things to do to finish off the afternoon as well. So plenty of more to come. Uh, I'll see you after the run. Oh man. It's getting really hot. It's getting really hot these last few weeks. It was a good run though. Uh, we did a 4.2K and the split was a 4.48. I used Strava. It's a really good running app. If you guys are into your running, and you don't have Strava, make sure you get your hands on it. I'm absolutely wrecked. So I've just got to Hack Fair, and I'm here because I got this microphone 
And I've been trying to use, well, I wanted to use this microphone for this video today, and I bought it from the guys here. Actually, I won't say the name of the place that I bought it from, um, but they've given me the wrong specs. They've given me ones that only service an Android, and I'm filming on an iPhone. So I got it on Friday. I was really frustrated to get home and see that it wasn't able to work. So I'm here back at Pack Fair to go and get myself, hopefully, an iPhone microphone that can make these videos a little bit better. After sorting out the microphone, I went and grabbed myself some lunch. Subway, teriyaki chicken footlong is always a good call. And then I actually jumped into Big W. I've had some success buying retail arbitrage in here in the past, and I thought I'd just drop in just to see what they had. Black sales for $40. This could actually turn into about 80 bucks, I feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and purchase that. This one I've sold a number of times before, guys. I had a big retail arbitrage buy. I grabbed about two copies last time. They went quick, so I've grabbed that again. Um, then Sean the Sheep as well, complete series. We sold that one today, guys. I'm buying it for $20. And then this one right here, She-Ra and He-Man. I reckon as a combination. There was one that was sell, uh, sold for $200. So I was very tempted to pick that one up. But at $80, turning into 200 with just one sale, I did leave it. Found another copy of Black Sales, all up. I bought it for 150, saved 150. Well, that was good and bad, guys. The bad news is I've got to come back here tomorrow to pick up the microphone because it's in stock at another store and he's going to bring it across. Um, so that was a little bit frustrating. But um, I dropped myself into Big W, and if you guys missed the retail arbitrage Big W uh, video that I put out oh, maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago, it was an absolute cracker. We've already, as you would have seen today, the, the brand new box set DVDs that I've already been going on to sell. We found a few more, which I didn't think was possible, but this one here, Offspring, um, as I would have said in the voiceover, this one uh, I've sold for about $120 odd dollars. So uh, sell through rate on this thing was about two, maybe three days. Both of them went internationally. Um, so I got about $150 worth of revenue per box set. So the reason I grabbed it is obviously based on my past sales history. Um, this one here as well, we just sold that today. I just put it to the post office. I've gone in, I've grabbed myself another one for 20 bucks. It should turn into about $65, $70 uh, as it did today. It went internationally today, so maybe that'll be the case for that one again. And I've given this one a bit of a go, Black Sales. Look, it's season one to four. I think that's a complete series set. Um, 40 bucks, I reckon I can get about $80 for it. I just know that I always pick this one up when it's in pre-owned condition in the op shops and individually per season, I generally get about 15 to 20 bucks a piece. So I'm confident that I can get the $80 for this. Uh, look, a $40 purchase price, 750 to ship, take fees. I'm probably not gonna make a hell of a lot of money in it. I've got two copies, so I'm just gonna give them both a go. If I can move them for 80 each, I might overall make myself about 30 bucks, but uh, I think it's just worth giving it a go. So four really good DVDs there to kind of make this little trip to the shops definitely worthwhile. All right. Well, that wasn't too bad. All right, so it's uh, 2 p.m. And uh, that's typically when I get home. If I'm not out doing what I just did then, I'm typically out in a thrift store for a few hours uh, over the lunch period um, just to see what I can find after I do the post. But uh, today it was just a few DVDs, which was good. Um, now, I've, I've I generally what I like to do even more so now uh, is do some listings in the afternoon. And uh, it's always been 10 a day, the way I've operated. But I'm actually spending a little bit more time now doing item specifics because I was at a, re a recent eBay event. Hopefully you watched that last video that I put out about that. Um, and there was all this hype and conversation around what the algorithm is actually looking for. And that's good customer service, taking the post uh, to the post office in the morning first up and, uh, and then responding to any messages. Now, I don't have any messages that have come through so far today on a customer service level. I've only got one offer to send off on a hat, which I'm doing as I speak here with you right now. It's a $30 item that I'm sending a best offer out for for $28. So that clears all my best offers. Um, I can do an end relist strategy. I might maybe do an end relist on maybe 10 to 15 items. Uh, I don't think that's huge. But um, the big one is to just have no tasks. You just want to have on that little task bar on your eBay account, no tasks pending. If that's the case, from then, uh, I can go across and I can sit down and do some listings. And I think today, I'll go ahead and I'll put these four up and a lot of them are actually gonna be obviously previously sold items so I can just simply hit relist and it's done. There's no real listing to it. You just hit two buttons and you're live. Um, I've already had six listings get scheduled up from the day prior. They've gone live at nine o'clock this morning. Um, I've only had one sale come through so far today, which is a little bit strange considering I average sort of three to 400 in revenue a day. 
right now at two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm sitting on $30 in revenue. So after a monster weekend, it's funny how the algorithm just suddenly tails off for you and it's probably gonna be a slightly slower day today, but I know through experience that that's nothing to worry about because the sales will come back again. Um, I've just got a weird way of just leveling things out. But uh, yeah, so that's me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and blast these listings up and uh, then I wanna show you a massive shoe haul that I've just recently purchased of a guy in Perth. All right, so check it out guys. Look at all of these shoes that I've got here. I did a deal with a guy from Perth who said that he wasn't able to come to the reseller meetup that we're doing in Perth on September 28. I should say that as well. For any of you guys over there in WA, a reseller meetup event at the uh, Grosvenor, at the Grosvenor Hotel, uh, September 28, 6 p.m. arrival, just for an hour and a half or so, uh, just to catch up and say hello. Hopefully you can make it RSVP on my Instagram at the Aussie Flipper if you want to come along. But one of the guys that was wanting to come along, uh, he's actually moving to Melbourne and he missed me at the Melbourne reseller meetup. He's missing me at the Perth reseller meetup. And he's like, Matt, I just want to sell you some stuff if you're interested. And it's all of his old shoes. And he's thrifted a lot of these, but some of them were out of his personal collection as well. Uh, we cut up a deal that ended up working out to $460. I'm gonna take you through some of the cool shoes that we've got in the mix. And I'll let you know what the estimated resale value and then what the profit is expected to be. Uh, when they all go on to sell. And I'll be very curious to get your thoughts in the comments below as to whether or not you think it was a good deal. All right, here's a look at all the shoes. Um, so all up, there are a total of 20 pairs. Um, there's a really good mix there of Nike, Adidas, New Balance, as you can see there. Um, I'll start off back down here. These three pairs of shoes, I'm not 100% sure if they're authentic or not. There was just a few alarm bells um, with these shoes. I'm just a little bit nervous to go ahead and list them up. These are a pair of Jordans, but I just let me know if you think they're authentic or not. I don't know. I think you would have just thrifted these. Yeah, they could be authentic. I don't know. I'm just very, very nervous, as I said. These as well, not 100% sure. They look pretty good, though. Um, they actually might be okay. I might be just scaring myself for no reason, but I'll put them down towards the end as they're a bit iffy. Um, these I've got in, well, just not as great a condition, I guess. These are the Nike tennis courts. Uh, not a bad pair of shoes, but as you can see, they've had a bit of love, so um, they'll need a good clean before I go ahead and list them. Uh, these Puma Clydes, a similar result there. Good soles on them, but um, yeah, just a, a really good clean is going to be definitely necessary. Uh, we've got some Vans here. They always seem to sell pretty well for me. Some really nice leather ones here as well. These are the variation of the Adidas Y3, so they should go for some decent money, maybe $35 to $40, something like that. Um, these were really cool. These were the uh, the day one. Um, the, uh, they, were leather, they were leather upper. Um, no insole in there, but that's okay. They should, they should go okay. Uh, moving on down here, um, these I thought were an awesome pair of Nike shoes. Have a look at those. Really cool colorway. They're going to clean up really well and the soles are still in great condition. He's paid just the $5 for them in the thrift. What a steal that was. Um, this one here, they're, they're a cool pair of running shoes. Again, they've had some wear, but they aren't too bad. Um, this gets up to the interesting stuff though. I want to take you through these. Some gazelles, you're always going to get about $50 to $55 for a pair of gazelles. I really love these Hoka running shoes. Um, these are the Arahi 2s. Um, they aren't in too bad a condition. No inner sole though, and there's a bit of heel damage that I can peel that off though. Um, so that won't be too bad. Um, these are actually my size and they're in excellent condition. So I wanted to go ahead with the, the grab of these more for myself than anything else. They're just a really cool pair of shoes. They're becoming very trendy, uh, the newies. These are an awesome pair of Asics running shoes. Look at that. Look at the condition on those. So that was an awesome buy. That might go upwards of about $70, maybe $80 uh, for those ones there. That was fantastic to see. Uh, I really love these Reebok Classics. Uh, they were in great condition, the LX 850s or the 8500s, sorry. Um, they're in great condition too. They're almost like new, those Reeboks. So they should go for about $60 maybe $70 for those ones there. Um, these New Balance are pretty cool too. Uh, they should go for some decent money. So look, all in all guys, these are the Noahs. I should quickly say, I love those. The Adidas Noahs, they're a pretty clean pair of shoes too. So really cool. We're starting off a little bit low there, but then we're getting out up into some really high quality stuff here. But check this out. This is an unbelievable grab. Out of his own personal collection, we've got the, we've got the Nike Kobe Poison Dart Frogs. These are an unbelievable pair of shoes, and the, and the comps on eBay, you're talking about $350. They're a size US 14. The Kobe, Kobe Poison Dart Frog. I've got a guy here on the coast who loves his Kobe's, and we're going to potentially look at doing a trade for these shoes. Um, but the soles, they're in great condition. He paid $15. 
I bought them off him for 50. We did the shoe separately and uh, we ended up doing 50 bucks for these alone. So 50 into maybe 350, that was an absolute steal, I thought. But um, let's have a look at how much I think I can get for all of these. So I'm gonna put the numbers up here for you guys. It looks like I'm gonna be able to get about $1,000 worth of estimated resale value across the board. So when you take out the fees, post cost of goods, it's about a $250 clean profit. So to spend $460 all up, including postage, to get my hands on 20 pairs of shoes, to make $250, I'm probably gonna be making myself a little over $10 in profit per shoe when it's all said and done. So is that something you think is a good deal? Is that something you think I could have passed on? Uh, I'd be very interested to get your thoughts in the comments below. Having said all of that, as I've mentioned on this channel over the last few weeks, I've really battled in the thrift stores to be able to find good shoes just like all of these. So if there's one thing of profit, trying to make $10 in profit per pair, it's not too bad. You'd probably like to make a few more dollars. But the other hand is also having good quality stock that you know will go on to sell. I'm pretty confident in about 70% of these shoes in this allocation, which is generally what you can expect when you buy a form of wholesale. You're always assuming that there's going to be a few that you don't really love, and then there's going to be a few at the higher end that you absolutely love. So while it's not a true wholesale agreement, I definitely think if there's ways that you can connect with people to buy bulk, just try and get yourself one hero item in the mix. For me, it was the Kobe Poison Dart Frog. So I knew that I could get about 350 on them alone, and then from then the rest kind of just plays out as extras and, and good profit. So um, you're always going to get the good, you're always going to get the bad, but I think out of this lot, personally, in my opinion, $250 of expected profit, I think it's definitely worth the pick up because I've had to do absolutely nothing for it. I haven't had to go and rummage around thrift stores to try and find these 20 shoes. They've just simply come in through the garage door in a mail delivery, open the box up, and suddenly I've got 250 bucks worth of profit that I can just simply now list up. Timing is everything. It's super important. And if you, can't, if you can get yourself out of the thrift stores in buying in other ways, I think it's a really good thing for your business. So it's four o'clock. I go to the gym at five. I've got an hour to go. Things are moving really well. I've been able to get my listings done. I've sorted out my shoes. I just need to put them in the wash and give them a bit of a clean. That will be for tomorrow's uh, set of listing. But I've been able to film this video, do the post, go for a run, do the you know a few different bits of pieces that we're able to do at the shops, get some more good DVDs that are going to go on to sell fast. Um, and hopefully you've just seen, I guess, a bit of a glimpse as to how my day operates. I'm going to go to the gym at five, come back home, have dinner. And then I generally sit on YouTube and I watch editing videos. I watch how to make a better YouTube video. And um, that's actually more of a hobby than a, a job task. Like I don't necessarily need to be looking at how to make better videos, but rather than watching Netflix, I just think why not learn rather than just veg out. So yeah, I generally do that until about nine o'clock and then I go to bed. So that's a typical day in the life for me on a Monday. Every single Monday, it's the same thing. This game of reselling is very much like clockwork. It just ticks over day by day, same sort of stuff. But um, everything is moving in the right direction. Hopefully a few more sales pop up over the next couple of hours to round out the day, but I'm not too concerned uh, if they don't. Um, if you can make the reseller meet up in Perth, go ahead and um, let me know on Instagram. And uh, yeah, appreciate you tuning into this video, guys. I'll leave you with a thrift pick right here to get your hands on. So go and enjoy that. Appreciate you being here for this one. We'll see you soon.